Thanks for watching Do I Need a Lawyer? I appreciate you starting your morning with us. In this segment, please allow me to step away from the legal question and talk about a nonprofit my wife and I started back in 2008. It's called Keep Georgia Safe. Now, the mission for Keep Georgia Safe is to provide safety education and crime prevention training to Georgia's families. So check out our website, keepgeorgiasafe.org, for all kinds of safety information that you can use to help protect your families and yourself. And with the warm weather upon us, that means more and more people will be heading to swimming pools around Georgia to escape the summer heat. This can be a great time for friends and family to gather together and have fun, but it's important to remind everyone that there are risks whenever any of us are around the water. So let me share with you some important statistics regarding swimming pool safety. Now, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, about 10 people die every day from drowning accidents. And this percentage obviously spikes much higher during the summer months. 20% of those deaths are children who are 14 years or younger. For every child who dies from drowning, four others will be treated in hospital emergency rooms. Some of their injuries can be devastating and include brain damage or other neurological damage. Near drowning can lead to a permanent brain injury. More than 50% of the people who are admitted to emergency rooms due to drowning-related injuries each year are hospitalized or placed in rehabilitative facilities. And children under the age of four have the highest drowning rate. Now, we assume that these deaths, these drowning deaths, only occur at a large swimming pool or spa. That simply is not the case. Children playing in the small portable pools are also at a high risk. In fact, in the last 10 years, there have been over 200 drownings in these small pools. And 85% of all drowning fatalities to young children under the age of five occur at a residential pool. In African American children, they are at a 10 times risk, a higher risk of drowning than Caucasian children. And we're often asked, who is legally responsible in these swimming pool accidents where the person drowns or suffers catastrophic injuries? Well, it depends on a variety of factors. Generally speaking, a property owner is liable if he or she knew about the defect and did not warn anyone of the defect and allowed it to exist. But in swimming pool cases, the law can vary greatly depending upon whether or not the injured person was on the property as a trespasser or as an invitee, where they were invited onto the property. In cases such as these, it is very important to hire an attorney immediately so an investigation of the accident can happen quickly. One case in particular comes to mind that I handled a few years ago. A young child went through a gate surrounding a swimming pool and it was at an apartment complex. The gate was not secured with a lock during the winter months. Unfortunately, the child fell into the pool and his body was not found until hours later. And it was submerged under a swimming cool pool cover that only partly covered the pool. Well, we were hired by the family the next day and we were able to secure photos of the scene that showed the gate was not locked as was required by the city and county ordinances. We were able to pursue the claims against the apartment complex and the management company for violation of these city and county codes. Well, what other potential claims are there in these swimming pool cases? Well, there may be defective swimming pool equipment that caused the injury. So the claims could be against the designer and or the manufacturer of the equipment. You could possibly pursue a negligent supervision claim if a lifeguard is hired to be on duty and he does not properly do his job. A claim could be made to the apartment complex, hotel, or homeowner if they fail to properly secure the pool with a fence and a la uh, locking system. Now, lack of safety signage, that is a, a, a definite claim. Failure to cover the swimming pool drains. There's so many things that, that we will pursue and we'll investigate. And we'd like to see that these accidents never happen as these are preventable injuries and preventable deaths. Well, here's some tips you can use regarding swimming pool safety. First of all, remember the buddy system. Never swim alone. Only get in the water with a friend that can swim. Two, never leave a young child unsupervised in or around a pool. Three, do not use flotation devices as a substitute for supervision. However, please keep life jackets or other flotation devices uh, nearby if they are ever needed. Number four, please do not assume that your child can be left alone because he is capable of swimming. Five, always jump in feet first. It's a great rule of thumb, whether you're jumping into a pool or into a lake. 
Number six, remove toys not in use. Okay, remove them from in and around the pool when they're not being used as they can uh, attract young children to the water. And number eight, or seven rather, if you have a pool at your home, please make sure you have a fence around it that can be locked and never prop the gate open. Eight, ensure the pool has safe drain covers. Nine, keep rescue equipment by the pool. Ten, keep a phone close by the pool in case of emergency. Eleven, learn CPR. Twelve, if you've only recently become the owner of a pool, please make sure you're familiar with all the codes that apply and make sure you're in compliance. And finally, teach your children to swim. Enroll them in swim lessons. Again, it's my goal to try and prevent these tragedies from ever happening. But if someone you know is injured in a swimming pool accident, do not delay in contacting us. The consultation is free, completely confidential. There is no obligation. 770-934-8000. And we'll be right back.